Good morning, fourth grade, and welcome back to our last week of holes. Uh, today, well, obviously yesterday, Stanley fell into a hole with the lizards, so we're gonna see what happens next. We're in a really high intensity point right now because we found the warden, we found Mr. Sir, and now Stanley has fallen into that hole. Let's see what's going on. Chapter 47. The sun was up and Stanley's heart was still beating. There were eight lizards in the hole with him. Each one had exactly 11 yellow spots. The warden had dark circles under her eyes from lack of sleep and lines across her forehead and face which seemed exaggerated in the most dark morning light. Her skin looked blotchy. Satan, said Zero. Stanley looked at him, unsure of Zero to have even spoken or if he just imagined it. Why don't you go see if you can take the suitcase from Zero, the warden suggested. Yeah, right, said Mr. Sir. The lizards obviously aren't hungry, said the warden. Then you go get the suitcase, said Mr. Sir. They waited. S Tan Lee said Zero. Sometime later, Stanley saw a tarantula crawl across the dirt, not too far from his hole. He'd never seen a tarantula before, but there was no doubt that's what it was. He was momentarily fascinated by it as its big hairy body slowly moved across. Sorry, slowly moved and steadily along. Look, a tarantula, said Mr. Sir, also fascinated. I've never seen one, said the warden, except in... Stanley felt a sudden sharp, sharp sting on the back of his neck. The lizard hadn't bit him, however. It was just merely pushing off of him. It leapt off Stanley's neck and pounced on the tarantula. The last Stanley saw of it was one hairy leg sticking out of the lizard's mouth. Not hungry, huh, said Mr. Sir. Stanley returned to the snow, but it was harder to get there when the sun was up. As the sun rose, the lizards moved lower in the hole, keeping mainly in the shade. They were no longer on his head and shoulders, but had moved down to his stomach, legs, and feet. He couldn't see any lizards on Zero, but believed there were two, between Zero's knees, shaded from the sun in the suitcase. How are you doing, Stanley asked quietly. He didn't whisper, but his voice was dry and raspy. My legs are numb, said Zero. I'm going to try and climb out of the hole, said Stanley. As he tried to pull himself up, using just his arm, he felt a claw dig into his ankle. He gently eased himself back down. Is this your first name backwards? Zero asked. Stanley stared at him in amazement. Had he been working on that all night? He heard the sound of approaching cars. Mr. Sir and the warden heard it as well. You think it's them, asked the warden? It ain't Girl Scouts selling cookies, said Mr. Sir. He heard the cars come to a stop and the doors open and shut. A little while later, he saw Mr. Bonanski and two strangers coming across the lake. One was a tall man in a business suit and a cowboy hat. The other was a short woman holding a briefcase. The woman had to take three steps for every two the, taken by the man. Stanley Elnatch, she called, moving out of the, ahead of the others. I suggest you don't come any closer, said Mr. Sir. You can't stop me, she snapped, and then took a second glance at him, wearing pajama pants and nothing else. We'll get you out of here, Stanley, she said. Don't you worry. She appeared to be Hispanic, with straight black hair and dark eyes. She spoke with a little bit of a Mexican accent, trilling her R's. What in tarnation, the tall man exclaimed as he came up behind her. She turned on him. I'm telling you right now, if any harm comes to him, we will be filing charges not only against Miss Walker and Camp Green Lake, but the entire state of Texas as well. Child abuse, false imprisonment, torture. The man was more than a head taller than she was and was able to look directly over her head as she spoke to the warden. How long have they been in here? All night, as you can see by the way we're dressed. They snuck into my cabin while I was asleep and stole my suitcase. I chased after them and they ran out here and fell into the lizard's nest. I don't know what they were thinking. That's not true, Stanley said. Stanley, as your attorney, I advise you not to say anything, said the woman, until you and I have had the chance to talk in private. Stanley wondered why the warden lied about the suitcase. He wondered why it was who it really belonged to. That was one thing he wanted to ask his lawyer, if she really was his lawyer. It's a miracle they're still alive, said the tall man. Yes, it is, the warden agreed with just a trace of disappointment in her voice. And they'd better come out of this alive, Stanley, as the warden yelled. It wouldn't have happened if you'd released the dumb to me yesterday. It wouldn't have happened if he wasn't a thief, said the warden. I told him he would be set free today, and I guess he decided to try and make take some of my valuables with him. He's been delirious for the last week. Why didn't you release him when she came to you yesterday, the tall man asked. She didn't have proper authorization, said the warden. I had a court order. It was not authenticated, the warden said. Authenticated? It was signed by the judge who sentenced him. I need authentic authentication from the eternal attorney general, said the warden. How do I know it's legitimate? The boys in my custody have proven themselves dangerous to society. Am I supposed to just turn them loose into someone's hand with a piece of paper? Yes, said the woman. It's a, it's a court order. 
Stanley has been hospitalized for the past few days, the warden explained. He's been suffering from hallucinations and delirium, ranting and raving. He was in no condition to leave. The fact that he was trying to steal from me on the day before his release, he was released proves... Stanley tried to climb out of his hole, using mostly his arms as to not disturb the lizards too much. As he pulled himself upward, the lizards moved down, keeping out of the sun's direct rays. He swung his legs up and over, and the last of the lizards hopped off. Thank God, exclaimed the warden. She started toward him, then stopped. A lizard crawled out of his pocket and down his leg. Stanley was overcome by a rush of dizziness and almost fell over. He steadied himself, then reached down, took hold of Zero's arm, and helped him slowly to his feet. Zero still held the suitcase. The lizards, which had been hiding under it, squirred, scurried quickly into the hole. Stanley and Zero staggered away. The warden rushed to them. She hugged Zero. Thank God you're alive, she said, as she tried to take the suitcase from him. He jerked it free. It belongs to Stanley, he said. Don't cause any more trouble, the warden warned. You stole it from my cabin. You've been caught red-handed. If I press charges, Stanley might have to return to prison. Now I'm willing in view of all my circumstances to... It's got his name on it, said Zero. Stanley's lawyer pushed past the tall man to have a look. See, Zero shouted her. Stan... Sorry. See, Zero sh showed her. Stanley Yelnats. Stanley looked too. There, in big black letters, was Stanley Yelnats. The, the tall man looked over the heads of the others at the name of the suitcase. You say he stole it from your cabin? The warden stared in disbelief. That's, mm, that impossible. It's impossible. She couldn't even say it. They slowly walked back to camp. The tall man was the Texas Attorney General, the chief law enforcement officer from the state. Stanley's lawyer was named Mrs. Morango. Stanley held the suitcase. He was so tired he couldn't think straight. He felt as if he was walking in a dream, not quite able to comprehend what was going on around him. They stopped in front of the camp office. Mr. Sir went inside to get Stanley's belongings. The attorney general told Mr. Pendansky to get the boy something to drink and eat. The warden seemed dazed to Stanley. You can't even read, she said to Zero. Zero said nothing. Miss Morango put a hand on Stanley's shoulder and told him to hang in there. He would be seeing his parents soon. She was shorter than Stanley, but somehow gave the appearance of being tall. Mr. Pendansky turned, returned with two cartons of orange juice and two bagels. Stanley drank the juice, but didn't feel like eating anything. Wait, the warden exclaimed. I didn't say they stole the suitcase. It's his suitcase, obviously, but he put my things from the cabin inside of it. That isn't what you said earlier, said Miss Morango. What's in the suitcase, the warden asked Stanley. Tell us what's in it, then we'll open it and see. Stanley didn't know what to do. Stanley, as your lawyer, I advise you not to open your suitcase, said Miss Morango. He has to open it, said the warden. I have the right to check the personal property of any of the detainees. How do I know if there aren't drugs or weapons in there? He stole a car, too. I've got witnesses. She was nearly hysterical. He is no longer under your jurisdiction, said Stanley's lawyer. He has not been officially released, said the warden. Open the suitcase, Stanley. Do not open it, said Stanley's lawyer. Stanley did nothing. Mr. Sir returned from the office with Stanley's backpack and clothes. The attorney general handed Miss Rango a sheet of paper. You're free to go, he said to Stanley. I know you're anxious to get out of here, so you can just keep the orange suitcase as an orange suit as a souvenir. Or burn it. Whatever you want. Good luck, Stanley. He reached out his hand to shake. Miss Morango hurried Stanley away. Come on, Stanley, she said. We have a lot to talk about. Stanley stopped and turned to look at Zero. He couldn't just leave him there. Zero gave him thumbs up. I can't leave Hector, Stanley said. I suggest we go, said his lawyer with a sense of urgency in her voice. I'll be okay, said Zero. His eyes shifted towards Mr. Penansky on one side of him, then to the warden and Mr. Sir on the other. There's nothing I can do for your friends, said Miss Morango. You were released on pursuant to an order from the judge. They'll kill him, said Stanley. Your friend is not in danger, said the attorney general. There's going to be an investigation into everything that's happened here. For the present, I am taking charge of the camp. Come on, Stanley, said his lawyer. Your parents are waiting. Stanley stayed where he was. His lawyer sighed. May I have a look at Hector's file, she asked. Certainly, said the attorney general. Miss Walker, go get Hector's file. She looked at him blankly. Well? The warden turned to Mr. Pendansky. Bring me Hector Zeroni's file. He stared at her. Get it, she ordered. Mr. Pendansky walked into the office. He returned a few minutes later and announced the file was apparently misplaced. The attorney general was outraged. What kind of camp are you running here, Miss Walker? The warden said nothing. She stared at the suitcase. The attorney general assured Stanley's lawyer that they would get the records. Excuse me while I call my office. He turned back to the warden. I assume the phone works. He walked into the camp office, slamming the door behind him. A little while after, he reappeared and told the warden he wanted to talk to her. She cursed, then went inside. Stanley gave Zero the thumbs up. Caveman? 
is that you? He turned to see Armpit and Squid coming out of the rec room. Squid shot it back into the rec room. Caveman and Zero are out here. Soon all the boys from Group D had gathered around him and Zero. Good to see you, man, Armpit said, shaking his hand. We thought you were buzzer food. Stanley's being released today, said Mr. Pandansky. Way to go, said Magnet, hitting him on the shoulder. And he didn't even have to step on a rattlesnake, said Squid. Even Zigzag took st shook Stanley's arm. Sorry about, you know. It's cool, said Stanley. We had to lift the truck clear out of the hole, Zigzag told him. It took everybody in C, D, and E. We just picked it right up. It was really cool, said Twitch. X-Ray was the only one that didn't come over. Stanley saw him hang back and behind the others for a moment, then returned to the rec room. Guess what, said Magnet, glancing at Mr. Penansky. Mom says we don't have to dig any holes anymore. That's great, Stanley said. Will you do me a favor, asked Squid. I guess, Stanley said, somehow hesitant. I want you to... He turned to Miss Marengo. Hey, lady, you have a pen and paper I can borrow? She gave it to him and Squid wrote down a phone number for her. She, she gave it to him and Squid wrote down a phone number, which she gave to Stanley. Call my mom for me, okay? Tell her, tell her I said I was sorry. Tell her Alan said I was sorry. Stanley promised he would. Now you be careful out there in the real world, said Aaron Pim. Not everybody's as nice as us, Stanley smiled. The boys departed when the warden came out of the office. The attorney general was right behind her. My office is having some difficulty locating Hector Zeroni's records, the attorney general said. So you have no claim of authority over him, asked Miss Marengo. I didn't say that. He's in the computer. We just can't access his records. It's like they've fallen through a hole in cyberspace. A hole in cyberspace, Miss Marengo repeated. How interesting. When is his release date? I don't know. How long has he been here? Like I said, we can't. So what are you planning to do with him? Keep him confined indefinitely without justification while you go crawling through black holes in cyberspace? The attorney general stared at her. He was obviously incarcerated for a reason. Oh, and what reason was that? The attorney general said nothing. Stanley's lawyer took a hold of Zero's hand. Come on, Hector, you're coming with us. See you guys tomorrow.